Good Morning Survivor. As we wake up here, the plan is to walk you through how to build a simple yet effective starter base that will easily hold up for at least day 7 and day 14 Blood Moon Hordes. Not to mention of course making short work of any wandering hordes or soul zombies that might show up at day or night time. The bonus. Well, it's achievable through getting all the materials during the first day and building it up. This doesn't necessarily mean you should build it up on the first day, just that you could. It's still recommended to gather the materials, so that if you can't find anywhere to hold up for the first night, that you could get started on it or just use some of the materials for a night base and then keep scouting for a better location the subsequent days. Firstly, dig clay, hack stone and combine it into cobblestone rocks. These in turn go into crafting flagstone blocks, which will later upgrade to cobblestone blocks after placement. We also grab a bunch of wood to serve as floor, second level walls and ceiling. In addition, we put in some doors and ladders and hatches, arrow slits, which are great for getting an angle shooting down at any zombies that might make it to the outside of your walls. Of course, we also have spikes. Lots of spikes outside of the walls. As always, you need to pick up stones, punch bushes and grass to get enough resources for the stone axe, stone shovel, and don't forget your starting quest. A rough count of the amount of resources we need is the following. We need enough stone and clay to make 36 flagstone blocks costing 4 each. That's 144 cobblestone rocks. As we also want to upgrade them to cobblestone blocks, that's an added 10 cobblestone rocks per block, making it an extra 360 cobblestone rocks. In total, that's just over 400 stone and clay needed. It's always a good idea to have extra for repairs, so don't be stingy when you collect it. Why do we make the base out of flagstone and cobblestone and not wood? Well, it's a matter of hit points. Wood has 100, although it can be upgraded to have more with added wood and scrap iron. But flagstone blocks have a nice 500 hit points. Upgraded to cobblestone blocks, it jumps to 1500. That's more than enough to withstand a fair pounding by zombies doing 10 or 20 damage. In contrast, a wooden block would break a lot faster, so you end up spending a lot of time trying to repair it, and that's time you should be spending shooting at the zombies with your bow to kill them. In addition, for the wooden blocks for the ceiling, walls, and flooring, we need a bunch of wood. Around 600 will do it for the base itself, and then as much as you can gather to craft enough spikes to place around the base. Since spikes will get depleted every time zombies run into them, make sure you chop down enough trees and replant the trees to have a steady supply of wood nearby. So let's get started on the building itself. Find a flat area, as that helps to prevent zombies from tunneling in through the sides, which could happen if you place it poorly, such as up on hills. On top of roads could work, as it's usually nice and flat. The basic shape is three blocks wide walls, stacked three high. Once you have two floors done, you're safe even if wandering zombies come for a visit, which gives you an easier time to continue building in peace without risking being jumped by sneaking zombies. Once we have the walls done up three high, we'll fill in flooring with wooden frames and upgrade them. Leave a space in the middle and put down arrow slits, as that can be very useful if zombies happen to break through the walls, as you can shoot through the gaps, which saves you from having to jump down to fight them. It's also recommended to leave a one block open, put in some ladders and finish it up with a hatch. That gives you space to go down to upgrade and repair from the inside, whereas the hatch prevents zombies who break through from climbing up to the second floor. You build up the walls, put in the door, and I like to put stairs on the outside with a one gap wide so zombies have trouble getting to the door to bash it. Any design of the walls really works, with or without openings, with or without windows. Arrow slits can be good for allowing you to shoot out, but ultimately you're not going to be spending a lot of time here fighting anyway. Fighting is best done from the top floor. Since there's a 3x3 space inside, you do have quite a lot of space to put in a ladder going up to the roof, you can put it in your forge, campfire and some chests to store your loot. Once the roof is done, you can put in the arrow slits overhanging the walls. Since arrow slits give a good view below at angles, as well as provide somewhere to stand when you shoot downwards, they are very useful when zombies get close to the walls. 
You could be using iron bars or metal trussing, that would work, but those require iron, and quite a lot of it. And I prefer to use iron slits made out of wood because it just saves the iron for the tools, which is a lot more useful early on in the game. With the basics done, we can go down to the bottom floor and upgrade the flagstone to cobblestone, thereby tripling its durability. Having the internal ladder, as you can see, makes that very simple. You don't need to go outside and risk getting hit by zombies. It's also a good place to mine during the night. Just dig and hack your way downwards and you have a simple entrance to a mine as well, protected from zombies by being inside. The final stage is to start placing spikes around your base. Two or three rows outside work great, and they can withstand a fair amount of zombies as they attack, which gives you a lot of extra time to shoot with your bow, and thereby sparing your walls from taking too much of a beating. At this point we're pretty much done. You can see that it's rather spacious, and their arrow slits give good coverage to shoot downwards from as you stand on top of the roof. So how does the base work during the Blood Moon Haunts? Let's fast forward. We are here at the start of the Day 7 Horde. Your actual Horde difficulty will depend on various things, mostly your level, the day count, and how many times you've died. I've given myself a pretty average game stage of 18 here. The zombies will be coming in. They'll run up to the spikes, and die to the spikes, and of course to your arrows. You did remember to loot bird nests and craft arrows, right? If not, you'll have a bit of a harder time defending your base. Always keep a hundred or so arrows around, more if you can. Pepper the zombies with arrows while the spikes do their thing and you should have no issues at all with the first horde. As it's generally very small, it will deplete easily. Going down to the lower level to repair some, you can see that it, there's very little damage done by the zombies. That's because they get stuck on the spikes and hopefully killed by your arrows. And congratulations! You've survived your first Blood Moon Horde in your own base. If this was your first time, pat yourself on the back. I certainly did not survive my first Blood Moon Horde. On the other hand, I hadn't seen any guides of what to build to keep me safe either. But what about Day 14? Let's fast forward and try the exact same base. We are now at the day 14 horde. The game stage has gone up to 112, so it's supposed to be much harder than day 7 which was at 18 game stage. You'll notice immediately that a lot more zombies come running up, including some zombie dogs. Astute observers will also notice the wolves, as it seemed a wolf pack spawned right before the Blood Moon Horde. More meat in the morning at least, delicious. All the zombies are pretty easy to deal with from on top of the base. Just keep shooting, and I've switched to a crossbow here, even though a normal bow works almost as well. Move around a bit to keep the zombies hitting spikes even as the spikes get broken from impact and you'll have an easier time. With three layers of spikes, while one side might lose all of theirs, you can just move around on top of the roof to the other side, making the zombies shift there as well. Having a look at the walls, you'll see that they've taken more damage than during the Day 7 Horde. This is mostly since the spike get taken out, enabling the zombies to actually reach the walls. But with 1500 hit points, there's no way they're gonna break through easily. Again, if they're pounding on the walls too much, just shift to the other side and keep shooting and let the spike soak up the horde. And easy as that, before long, the majority of the zombies and the waves have been taken care of and you're down to the sole zombie at a time trickle wave. Eventually, dawn breaks, and you've survived the day 14 horde as well. Isn't life great? So what have we learned? Well, you should now know the basics of a simple yet very effective early game base that will withstand day 7 and day 14 hordes with ease. Being achievable even on the first day, it should leave you plenty of time to prepare for the hordes of the undead. 
You can go out do your exploring, looting and scavenging, as well as mining and gathering resources. So how will it stand up to a Day 21 horde? I leave that for you to try out. And let me know in the comment section below if you do and how the build worked for you. And by all means, share your favorite early base builds as well and why they work so well for you. For more advanced base building, check out my other episodes in the build a base series which includes a lot of the traps and electrical items. If you found this guide useful, do leave a like and subscribe for more content. But that's it for now, good luck, stay safe.